Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. So welcome to the show. Today we have with us Omi Quatli. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. And you're Roberto Romo, but what does Omi Quatli mean? Omi Quatli means uh, eagle bone. Eagle bone. And that is in Nahuatl? Yes, that is correct. It's in the, our native uh, Nahuatl language. Okay, now you are a teacher, an artist, a dancer, and very talented. You're even a, you were our interpreter at one time. That is correct. <laughs> yes, I'm the jack of all traits. Well, you're very talented, and you currently work at the School of Cultural Arts, or what's the name of the school? The name of the school, it's the School of Arts and Culture. Arts and Culture. At the Mexican Heritage Plaza. Okay, and what do you teach there? Currently, I'm teaching two classes there. Mm -hmm. I'm focusing on teaching Aztec art, which is uh, taking the children on a voyage to exploring their art codices uh -huh. and uh, teaching them how to count in our language, how to draw in our language. Ah. Now, you say children. What age groups are you working with? Currently, I'm working with ages uh, 5 through 15. Oh, that's wonderful. There's one school down in L.A. that I know teaches Nahuatl and I think Mandarin. It's, really? yeah, it, beautiful. it's, it's a really nice, it's a Mexica school and it's, uh, um, I think it's an elementary school, but it's really fantastic. You'll have to check it out sometime. Great. Okay, so what other, so you teach two classes and there's a lot of different activities that go on there from what I understand. Yes, the School of Arts and Culture has been in existence for two years now. We have become self-governed. Uh, that was an award uh, that uh, the City of San Jose gave to us recently. Oh, okay. And we've been open to the community and we've been focusing on showing uh, different uh, materials such as uh, dance, music, mm -hmm. theater, visual arts. So it's been a very, very successful uh, two years that we've had the plaza open again. Wonderful. And how do the kids, how are they receptive? Yes, they are actually very hungry for knowledge. Uh -huh. And um, they do get a lot of stress from the academics. Sure. So art uh, teaches them patience, mm -hmm. meditation. Um, it also helps them reflect their voice. What is their opinion? What do they want to say? How do they feel? What's affecting their lives? What do they want to say to the public? So it's a very important uh, discipline. Uh -huh. So I would imagine this would help their, them academically in school. I mean, aside from the, the um, I guess, the, what they're learning from the culture, the arts and culture. Yeah, that is correct. Our, our community is under a lot of stress, mm -hmm. you know, financially, and the parents are seeing this shift in economics. And uh, children are very receptive, so what they do is they read on that, and then they stress. Right. And a lot of the times, a lot of them, um, a lot of, um, it's, um, they're under a lot of stress, and they demand, the, the system demands a lot from them. Mm -hmm. So children, what they do is they need that uh, escape from all the uh, numbers and letters and parents uh, losing jobs and right. all of that. So what we do is we not only teach them skills, 
but we also teach them culture. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, the, the big highlights of our school. And I think that is so important with so many of the kids getting into gangs and a lot of uh, mischief. That's correct. You know, when they have idle time. So it's good that the idle time is at least productive, even though you're not demanding them to do more homework, but you're giving them a release. Yes, that's correct. And we do that through a very focused and very intense knowledge of where we come from. You know, uh, we're, we come from a, a very tight social community where uh, we include children, elders, and a lot of the, the, the people, a lot of our youth, it's disconnected. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're young and they cannot connect to the older people or the younger people or the adults. Mm -hmm. So what we do is uh, locate them and says, this is your space. Be present, be focused, enjoy it, because you one day are gonna grow. Right. And yeah. uh, it's important to take knowledge of your spot. So tell me about some of the classes you have there. Uh, currently, I'm doing the uh, collaboration. Hopefully, um, we get enough enrollment for the Calpuli Tonaleque. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be including the youth to be participating in the Aztec New Year and producing a lot of the art that will be um, offered to the elders when oh. they arrive. The Aztec New Year's. That's a fantastic event. Now, do you prepare the kids at your level to be involved with that? Yes, anything that has to do with visual arts, mm -hmm. uh, we are working with the Calpuli to see how we can uh, bring the children into the equation mm -hmm. and then uh, teach them the language, teach them the techniques, and uh, also the, the value of their participation and then that way they can present something that's going to be presented to, to the elders and to the community and uh, giving them pride in that, you know, that they took part in this right. event. How were they involved this past year? Uh, this past year what we were doing is we were doing uh, gallery shows mm -hmm. at the School of Arts and Culture and what we were doing, we were doing re recitals at the end where we would present to the community, the children that had been doing this work. Oh. And uh, we would do that with the performance, mm -hmm. visual arts, dance, music. Oh, and then we wonderful. would invite the community as well. Now you're quite an accomplished artist. Thank and you. I know you brought some of your work and I'd love to see it. So if we could go through some of it and show it to our audience. Sure, perfect. So I have uh, some of the work here that I have done, uh, this is a piece which focuses on inviting our people to vote. And that is a combination of Zapata mm -hmm. and Uncle Sam. It's a very important time yeah, where our really people are, are really getting a voice uh -huh. and exercising it. And um, I also have this piece here which is mixed media, which is, um, this is a little bit more of the personal work that I do. And um, it is called American Thanksgiving. And it's got a uh, little bit of a modern opinion and view to it. Explain what it is. Uh, basically here is, um, is our people. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is a, a woman you know, uh, we ho hold our women to be very sacred and to hold a lot of power. And uh, there's a, an apple, uh, I'm sorry, a pumpkin pie uh, in her stomach saying that she is the one that offers nourishment. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's sweet, like a strawberry. And um, here uh, we have uh, a little bit of what has happened to our people, which is that we've been blessed but we've been blessed with, uh, with bullets, you know, and those bullets are symbolic of different things that are, are um, shot in our direction. So that's this one. What are the numbers? And that's just, uh, a, uh, so you see here the bullet holes, mm -hmm. you see here the high caliber round, you see a little bit of uh, of uh, fonts 
lettering that uh, just kind of play a little bit with the eye okay. and then uh, create that uh, dialogue between the viewer. And, and this gentleman uh, represents a little bit of uh, the authority in the system. Okay. Uh, it's telling you, hey, keep, keep away, back off. Uh -huh. And uh, he's a saint, but he's married. And he's married to, and he's, he's like a ventriloquist. Ah, and uh, he's blessing her with bullets. Like oh, okay. uh, the uh -huh. system's always uh, shooting at us in different uh, ways, but it doesn't hurt her. It, it doesn't pierce her. It's behind her because she's untouchable. Wow. And then she has a, a feather. So it's uh -huh. a lot of symbolism that I like to play around wow, with. Wow, that is, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that one. And then I'm also working on a different project, which is which is uh, uh, a card game, and uh, it is called the Mexican Loteria, uh -huh. and uh, it's it's uh, geared uh, for the public uh, to experience a little bit of uh, storytelling with imagery. Ah, oh, okay, that is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I think of the deer dancer when I see this. Exactly. <laughs> and then nice. here's uh, the, the very last one, which is, I don't know if uh, the camera will, a little bit of the glare, but this is the artwork that I teach at the school, which is the codex, the traditional writing system of our people. And this was and produced. these are the symbols you would find on the Aztec calendar, right? That is correct. Okay. Yes, <laughs> uh, w our focus is to to teach people the importance of communication. Um, our system of writing uh, had no letters, so it was a uh, uh, pict pictographic. Mm -hmm. So uh, we use diverse symbols, and in combining them, we come with uh, we come out with. Uh, phrases, words, sentences, paragraphs, and then stories. So we show them how to organize that and, and uh, be centered. Now, do the kids learn very easily? I, I would assume they would um, as far as the language and the, you know, the codices themselves. They, they probably are, learn easier than we do, right? <laughs> Yes, unfortunately, we have a lot of regulations and we censor ourselves uh -huh. and we can't do that. But the children are very receptive uh -huh. and they're very hungry for knowledge and they're very hungry for something new. You know, th even though this is very old to them, living in the neighborhood, in the barrios, it's something very fresh and it calls their little hearts and they're extremely open and then they... Um, they participate. I have a very, very open curriculum where sometimes I don't have all the answers. And then uh -huh. the students say, oh, teacher, did you see this? And then I'm like, wow, only a kid's eyes can see that. Uh -huh. So it's a give and take that we have back and forth between the student and myself. Huh. Well, I know one time that you had come on the show with the maestro and you were talking That's about correct. colors and how the colors are interpreted by the gangs and then exactly. how they should be interpreted by the native culture and are those things that you're teaching the kids at an early age or how Ye is that used? Yes, basically what we do is we incorporate a lot of the ancient teachings which is I am you and you are me mm -hmm. and uh, we have our place and that place complements the other and what we do is we communicate uh, the importance of acceptance, of accepting yourself of accepting your neighbor and also letting them know that that idea has been implanted in, the, in us. We're the same people. Mm -hmm. And colors are very important because they're, they're just uh, vibrations. And uh, the symbols um, with the colors, you know, the red, we have life, life mm -hmm. itself. And uh, how can one be against that color mm -hmm. when it's our life, it's the color that runs through our veins? And uh, blue, why would we have any problem with blue? The sky is blue. You know, the waters, they reflect the, the light and, it, and the water turns blue. So it's just a very magical mm -hmm. 
experience and what we do is we communicate that to them and they go out with a different view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think that would be very important for them to learn at an early age. That's correct. So they're not influenced negatively later on in life, you know, when they're teenagers or jun um, junior high. Exactly. That is correct. Oh, that's good. Well, I'm glad you're doing that. Thank you for doing that. And so what, what kind of activities are there for, say, families? I know you have something coming up in the, during the holidays and... Well, the, the Mexican uh, Heritage Plaza, the School of Arts and Culture, has been very, very active now. Um, we have the Via Navideña, which what is... what is that? That is a celebration of Christmas. A lot of our people celebrate Christmas, and they come together. And it's an event that families can go. They can... Um, there's food, entertainment, performances, music. And, uh, you know, people of all ages go there. Uh, it's a very safe place to be. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we collaborate with a lot of artists and organizations uh, to put the event together. And it is uh, free of cost. And I believe this year will be from 6 to 9 p.m. And you had something for Day of the Dead? Yes, that is correct. Can you explain that a little bit? Uh, well, Day of the Dead for us is a very special time. It is remembering uh, the life of our ancestors. It is inviting them to come back to our home. It is uh, remembering what their food, the smells, um, touch itself. Mm -hmm. So we have a very strong connection with them still after they have parted. Um, we had a big... Um, uh, event where we invited the community to erect an altar oh. in memory of uh, artists, mm -hmm. family. And, and this was at the, the Heritage Plaza? Yes, that is correct. The community came mm -hmm. together. They, they put these uh, beautiful, beautiful altars, and uh, we got a really good response. You mm -hmm. know, people loved uh, what they saw. Because, you know, a lot of people... Us, us, um, I guess associated Halloween with, uh, and then they, uh, you know Halloween and not Day of the Dead. And now I notice that in San Jose, at least, there's more emphasis on the Day of the Dead, and people are under starting to understand it more um, than before, where you know it really wasn't recognized in this area that much. Yeah, Dia de los Muertos uh, for us. Um, is a very special, special day, and it's very important. And I, I have to thank the, the, the Chicano community also for taking that role mm -hmm. in being so far away from home or where their parents came, mm -hmm. and then them being hungry for that knowledge, that yearning, and then bringing everything and saying, let, let, me, let, me, let me dig a little. And I think it's extremely important for us to define, given that mm -hmm. that uh, celebration is... 50,000 years plus. Wow. So we cannot let that go for for mm -hmm. a, a simple mask or for a simple candy. Exactly. It's a way of exactly. life. Exactly. That's yeah. correct. That's wonderful. And then you have the the uh, the in March the uh, celebration, the big Aztec celebration. Yes. The New Year's. Tell us a little bit about that. And I, I know you're involved in that through the Capoli and, and the, the uh, school's also involved in that. Yes, well, Mexica New Year is a very, very magical time of year. Uh, we recently got uh, recognized by the city uh, for the work that uh, the Calpuli has been doing. Oh, I think it's, uh, I might be a little off, but I think it's ab about 25 years that we've been working slowly putting it together and now it's being recognized nationally and it is a time it is, where it is the largest one in the nation right yes i, I it just right became one of the largest <laughs> and it's uh, it, uh, even even in mexico that's surprising wow. you know uh -huh. but uh, i think that the the largest accomplishment is just a very safe environment where we connect and we educate the public and saying look we had our own calendar and it mm -hmm. started at this time it's also very important because uh, the sunrise ceremony is just something that you have to go to. It's very beautiful. Uh, community leaders, uh, 
from the oldest to the one that just saw the event passing mm -hmm. uh, through the street uh, attend, you know, and then they, they, they get to experience this beautiful gathering where everybody's equal, and then we see the, the father-son coming up. And, and you have a lot of different tribes there from across the nation. That's correct. We have our brothers uh, coming uh, far, uh, uh, from far away places. We've had people coming from Oklahoma, Mexico, uh, North and South Dakota, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Texas. I can go on forever. Right. And it's just um, a way to exchange a very special day and for us to reconnect and thank uh, life that we made it another year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that has really grown. And it seems like you always need a larger venue for it because of the, the amount of people <laughs> that come. And I guess you mentioned all those places, but I think you have Wisconsin and Chicago and yes. a lot of uh, places around the nation and people really recognize it. And it's quite an accomplishment, really, because I remember back several years ago saying, oh, we want to make it as big as this or that, and it's gone that and more. <laughs> so it's yes. really something to be proud of. And I think our community is very proud of it. You know, and that's why it's grown so much. Part of, part of the, the importance that we have in the work that we do is we give anybody ownership. In other words, this is yours if you want it, if you want to grow it. It's not just us being, you know, we're in charge or we're, no, it's not. It's just uh, what can we do without the person that brings the water? Mm -hmm. Without the person that does this, we, we have to include everybody. And um, that's something that we do really well, which is provide ownership to the community. Wow, that's great. So what are the future plans for the, uh, the school? I mean, what, what, we have about five minutes, he's telling me. <laughs> um, but if we can squeeze it in, what um, future plans are for the school as far as expansion or offering as far as classes? Currently, we're offering, um, you can go to the School of Arts and Culture, enroll in visual arts. Uh, you can take different courses. Um, those courses are always um, growing. Uh, and also, what's coming to the School of Arts and Culture is honing in a little bit more on teaching culture and making those association with different groups that mm -hmm. are very knowledgeable that have 20, 30 years working with the community mm -hmm. and incorporating them to educate us. We're oh, extremely open, wow. an extremely young school, and uh, we're just going to be growing from now on. Wow. Well, congratulations on all the work you've done there. I know Tamana has been very involved yes. with us as well as, you know, all the other groups in the community. And we look forward to continue working with, with Kapoli and your group. and. Um, you know, the Native community. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, well, thank you for being here. And we're looking forward to seeing your art. I guess you have it at different uh, venues. And where can we see your work? Uh, my work can be seen at uh, robertoromo.net. Okay. Currently, the, the site is under construction. But if you go t and Google it, if you put Roberto Romo, um, you'll sh for sure find me there. I'm the first one on that page. Okay, great. And what would you recommend to um, families with young children as far as guiding them or, um, you know, so they, their kids don't get in trouble kind of thing? You know, because everyone has a lot of issues they're dealing with, as you were saying earlier, with whether it's finances or jobs or this or that. But, you know, what's the best advice, guidance they can give their kids? I think uh, children are hungry. Don't advise them anymore. Have them advise you ah. and give them something to do. Uh -huh. I think that uh, doing something relieves a lot of that energy and then you're tired at the end of the day, but you're tired in a good way. You've done something mm -hmm. productive instead of being out there with a lot of energy and you don't know how to focus mm -hmm. it. So my, my advice would be for them to come to us Mm -hmm. and to tell us how we can help them. Well, I know a lot of the schools don't have the sports they used to have. They don't have music classes. They don't have, you know, they don't learn to play instruments. They don't have all those activities besides the academics that they used to have. You know, how they used to have sports and exactly. all these other things. 
So that's all been cut out. So this is a way through the dance. Like ex a lot of the kids, uh, you know, that's good exercise, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, so I would think that the kids getting into the dance or the music or you know that would really be a release of a lot of energy. Yes, that's correct. And uh, you know, there's uh, children for every discipline. Some of them like to drum. Some of them like to dance. Some of them like to do folklorico. Uh, guitar. Some of them are, are more of the visual artists that they just want to produce uh, paintings. So we need to identify that and then uh, once they start picking up that discipline to uh, offer them support and to push them mm -hmm. by only doing one thing and that's uh, challenging them. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you you can do better and they'll be like, oh okay, let me. <laughs> let me. <laughs> what about leadership? Leadership skills, is that something that's incorporated? Yes, uh, currently uh, myself, I'm in the Mali program, which is the Multicultural Arts Leadership uh, Initiative. And uh, that's housed at the School of Arts and Culture. Oh, okay. So simultaneously from being a teacher, I'm also being taught how to better network, how to be a, a person of color, and to identify the different networks uh -huh. that we need to reach. So that's a very important. So. Uh, that's a home at the School of Arts and Culture for us instructors so that we can teach uh, that to the children also. Well, you're doing a fantastic job there, and I congratulate thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming on thank the show. Thank you for having It's us. nice to see you again. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Like us on Facebook, and we'll have a lot, all of our shows on YouTube. And I think we're all over the place now. We're in Sunnyvale, Mountain View, out here. We're in Hawaii. and. And just about everywhere, as you can find us. We were in Albuquerque just recently, too. So, anyhow, we'll see you again next week. Good night.